If you have been following this podcast since the very beginning, I think today's guest, Dr. Lulu, was maybe episode five or six or somewhere right in the beginning. And now it's just been too long to not bring her back. So, Dr. Lulu, it is great to see you. Hi, Vince. How are you? I'm doing great. And everyone that is tuning in today, welcome back to A Mental Health Break, the podcast that normalizes the conversation around mental health. Remember, you are not alone, and there are over three years of weekly interviews to catch up on after today. But for today's episode, we have a great one in store. Dr. Lulu, she's been on Oprah. She's done a couple TED Talks, (laughs) and she is a pediatrician or former pediatrician now, but she is an award-winning LGBTQ and DEIB advocate, helping communities accept, affirm, and support the LGBTQ community. She's a media consultant, event host podcaster, best-selling author, you name it, mom of a transgender, young adult. I mean, she does it all, but she can say it a lot better than me. So Dr. Lulu, why don't you give our audience a bit big preview of what we have in store for today? I think you pretty much named it all, except you didn't mention that I'm Nigerian. Other than that, I'm pretty much, um, <laughs> you pretty much named everything. So i like to start by saying my name is Dr. Lulu, aka The Momatrician. I am a real doctor, so deal with it, right? <laughs> I am. I was born, bred, buttered, and slightly burned in Nigeria, which is one of the most homophobic countries in West Africa. So you just imagine me, Catholic, Black immigrant woman, also queer, telling my dad at 16 that I like girls and boys. That was not too much fun. But he didn't go ballistic on me. He just said, oh, it's it's a phase. I think it's a phase. I think, you know, you're going to grow out of it. It wasn't a big conversation. It wasn't really. And um, I grew up in Nigeria. Most of my, my my younger formative years were in Nigeria. Then I went to medical school in Nigeria, then came to, to the U.S. to Howard for my residency. And then I had my babies, and then the rest is history. So I am, um, yeah, happy to be here, for real. Most yeah, days, well, these days, you catch me on a good day when I'm in a good mood. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to have you back people. here. But I'd love to hear a quick word from our show sponsor, Tampa Counseling and Wellness, and you could find all of their information in the show description. Are you constantly exhausted and overwhelmed? Do you struggle with your confidence or self-esteem? Are you ready to live a life with more passion, courage, and excitement? At Tampa Counseling and Wellness, we want to be there for you every step of the way. While we understand that change may be difficult, we have a proven track record of helping our clients live a more joyous and meaningful life. Whether you are looking to overcome some current life challenges or you are looking to do some deeper healing, we are here to help you. Our compassionate approach to therapy is rooted in building your confidence and insight while helping you gain mastery of your life. If you would like to learn more about our services or you would like to schedule a free consultation with one of our clinicians, please visit us at www.tampacounselingandwellness.com or simply call or text us at 813-520-2807. We look forward to growing with you, Tampa Counseling and Wellness, where it is okay to not be okay. And yes, you're, I'm you're very humble, like- very humble <laughs> on your accomplishments. Also a U.S. Air Force veteran. So thank you oh, for yes, your service that's, that's there. True. I never remember everything. Um, I was a commander. I was a lieutenant colonel. I never remember. I, I, you know what? No conversation has me remembering all the boxes that I check. I do remember the one most important box, though, which is mother to my transgender young adult, which is why I do the work that I'm doing right now, which is why I'll be agitating the governor of Texas again this Saturday, because, you know, I can do that. Well, your passion and your heart for the area is leading by example for so many, and I'm sure an inspiration to so many parents out there just like yourself. Let's dive right into that, because I know that's the work you're most involved with right now. I mentioned you've retired from regular pediatric work and to focus on this right now so for everyone listening on today buckle up because she's about to get deep with you (laughs) oh my god are you sure you're describing me i'm just a humble servant (laughs) maybe i'm a black mamba maybe i'm a pit bull i don't know it just depends on what day (laughs) of the week (laughs) but yeah i think um I, 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 like I said, I, I, I'm proudly bisexual is the best way to introduce myself. I am queer. I like the one syllable, so I go by queer. But um, queer or not, nothing, ex, nothing prepares you for your child saying those words. 
mom, I'm gay or mom, I'm bisexual or mom, I'm transgender. Nothing prepares you for it, except maybe if you're a transgender person already, maybe, but maybe even your transgender person, maybe not, because there are two kinds of trans people. There are those who are out and trans, and there are those who are stealth, which means they are in hiding or they're not announcing that they are trans right. for obvious reasons it's not safe out there so i can see how if you're trans or even if you're not you still don't want your child to just have to go through what's what looks like is happening right now nobody wants that for their child so it still is difficult the difficult news to hear um some parents will just i mean i had a mom a long time ago who her child had just been diagnosed with HIV and he's gay. And she made a huge fuss in the office. She was like, oh my God, why isn't it cancer? You know, just give me leukemia, give me anything, but just don't give me gay. And so it is a very painful thing for Black parents, especially, and that was a Black mom. For Black parents, especially, it's a very difficult journey because we are uh, entangled in religious right. uh, I don't know what je ne sais quoi and culture and racism and, you know, bigotry and all the things, all the things, all the isms. And then you have a child who, you know, you love your child, but you just, you don't want this for them. Then mm. again, you can't help it. You have to support them. So it's a big conundrum, right? That's the word. It's a big old, what are you going to do? So, yeah. Well, you're giving other parents more idea of what to do like you're saying it is a very challenging time like you mentioned you're speaking to the governor again this saturday because you brought attention to this to me on our last conversation not very supportive of all humans so let's talk more about your advocacy work with the governor because that is another area you're leading by example yes i'm not actually having a conversation with him i wish i was i'm agitating him i'm not i'm i'm demonstrating and walking and marching and giving talks to the people who arrive at the Capitol. We're going to be marching at the Capitol this Saturday. for so I think Friday is National Day of Silence for all of the stuff that's happening to us. Okay. And I don't think I got that memo early enough because I have like five meetings tomorrow, but tomorrow <laughs> will have been a good day to be silent. But Friday, I think, is National Day of Silence. And then Saturday, we're just going to march at the Capitol here in Austin. Most times, I'm just, I have the little loudspeaker and I'm talking to the parents and encouraging them and talking to the kids and encouraging them. And yeah, the governor usually is in his office and he can hear us because he works at the Capitol. I think the thing about it is even the governor probably has queer people in his family. I say that because they are everywhere. They're ubiquitous. It's not like it's not a select few. Right. And if anything, if if the young generation of today has taught us everything, anything is that there are more and more and more of them realizing that, you know what, being straight or being, you know, one gender is actually not the norm. And they're, these younger generations, they're like, they don't give, they have no fucks to give. They're just like, you know what, whatever. They're very fearless. They're out there. They're fighting, you know, and I'm so proud of them. After George Floyd's incident, we saw the youth lead. The youth made a right. human shield around the black people. It was amazing watching youth, white youth for that, being real allies. So if they're going to fight, why, why not us? So I usually represent parents. I'm usually one of one <laughs> because there are not many black physician, pediatrician, of immigrant course. parents. So I check off a lot of boxes and most people don't want to check the boxes with me, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I have a big mouth. I might as well use it. So I'm here. I'm here. We shall be there on, on Saturday. We shall try to just encourage people. Because it's, it's, it's a, almost, it looks like it's a hopeless case, but I have to believe in the audacity of hope, that there is hope, that this is just the last ditch effort to fight even Hitler. No matter for how long Hitler was mean and, and had all his acts of violence towards the Jews, guess what? One day it ended. Yep. And that's what I have to believe that it's 
there. I have to have that hope that it's going to end someday. You're leading the way and you're definitely encouraging more people to use their story. Like you said, use your voice. And you mentioned something before, stealth. They may be stealth individuals who just for their own reasons and that is their personal reasons why they're not able to have the voice you have. But I think you're definitely providing the courage to a lot of people. But another way you do just this is through YouTube, through Instagram. You just mentioned you have these weekly shows. So I'd like to bring some awareness to that for anyone who is listening on today that thinks they can be a good fit for Dr. Lulu's shows. Let's learn more about it. Thank you so much. So on YouTube, every Thursdays around 10 a.m., I have the Parent of Queer Kids show. My YouTube is at Dr. Lulu Talk Radio, T-A-L-K Radio, Dr. Lulu Talk Radio. So I have that every every Thursday. Like today I went and I did about 30 minutes of just talking to the parents. Sometimes I have a guest like last week. This week I didn't have a guest, but I still went just to talk to them about, I talked about my my brand new TED Talk, which we're going to get to that in a minute. But I talked about the, the intersection between my brand new TED Talk gender sexuality alliance at schools and then gender neutral bathrooms because i found out that there's this app called the refuge app r-e-f-u-g-e refuge app where people can log on and find gender neutral bathrooms as you know there's this whole okay. debate about using bathrooms or not to use bathrooms so oh it's a big deal right now yeah Yes, for some people, it is literally life and death. Like if the wrong person goes into the wrong bathroom, they can lock the door and beat the heck out of them or kill them. Right. So this app helps people find gender neutral, aka safe bathrooms where people can just go and just use the bathroom for three minutes. So for you and I who are cisgendered people, it's a mundane task. It's like, I'm just going to go use the bathroom. I'll be right back, right? Mm -hmm. For these people, gender non gender non-binary transgender, gender expansive, gender non-conforming, whatever you want to call them, gender and bad first, any word you want to use to describe these people that are do not, that are not checking off the box as pure male or pure female in our own way of understanding as it's been going on, they can literally walk into the bathroom and not come back alive because somebody thinks, okay, you're here to sexually assault me. No, I'm here to use the restroom just like you. What are you thinking about? Like, why are you thinking about that? Yeah, And I say that because on my birthday weekend, I went to, to Austin, Texas with my family and my eldest child is my transgender child. And we, she had used the restroom before about an hour before we left. And then before we left, she was like, oh, I got to use the restroom again. She ran in and I was like, wait, 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 why are you using the restroom so much? I didn't realize that she was trying to use the restroom in lieu of going to Austin. So she would not have to start looking for a gender neutral bathroom. And I was like, oh my goodness, it hit me that what you and I take for granted as right. cisgendered people, for her, she has to think about this ahead of time. Now she travels to work. She travels around for work. And so she, she literally has to be very careful what, where she stops to buy gas and where she stops to use the restroom because we don't know. And now she's going to Florida next week. And there was a travel advisory from Florida. But she was like, mom, I'm going to go. It is what it is. I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, so I, I applaud her for being brave and living her truth and living authentically. I just don't want people looking at my kid who is innocent, recluse, Stanford trained student, mm -hmm. straight A student to come and just think that my child is a, a pedophile because she wants to use the restroom. Absolutely terrible. I, I wrote that up in the show notes for when we go live to put that in Refuge app. And again, can you repeat the name of yeah. your show that's on YouTube Thursdays at 10 a.m. so I can type that up correctly? Yes, it's Parents of Crickets. Yes, please. Thank you so much. You got it. All right. And that's not the only show you have, though. No, no, no. That's the Parents of Crickets. So this is the one on on Thursdays, really for parents to just mm -hmm. go and just hear my thoughts. It's not anything you know, major. It's just, I just, whatever, like, to, like this week, I was thinking about this app that I found this week. So I was like, I want to tell people about it. And ironically on LinkedIn, about two people were like, oh my goodness, thank you so much for this app. My child says, thank you because my child didn't know about it. My own kid didn't know about it. Uh, yeah. So it's just like one of those things that they say, no, if you if your job was the cure for cancer, would you tell everybody, you know? So when I found this app, I'm like, I'm going to tell people about it. I don't even know the app. They don't even know that I'm out here blowing right. them up, you know? And then the other thing I do is I have a talk show on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, it's called Queer Wednesday Wisdom, where Queer I interview Wednesday Wisdom. 
Yeah, but I spell the queer with a W, the so, Wednesday with a Z, and the wisdom with a Z. So it's spelled Send me Canada. that again in the chat so I can copy yeah, and paste that. Canada. Yeah, kind of differently just so it stands out um because i want people to know like if you're looking for it you then you know then that means you know about it right. um so wednesday is spelled with a z and then wisdom is spelled with a z and everyone so i will have this copy and paste it into the show description for your convenience and um then you said something on linkedin as well yes yeah, I mean, so on, on instagram is Yes. So on LinkedIn is, 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 is Square Wednesday Wisdom. For instance, yesterday I interviewed a, a lady who is a trans woman. She's Indian, but she lives in Germany and she lives as trans. And she was just sharing her stories about how, you know, just life for her. People look at her, people snicker behind her back, people laugh at her. People, but she was a big time Silicon Valley engineer when when she was still you know okay. presenting as a man and she employed over 1000 people but she just decided to transition as a woman and then people just said that like she lost family friends she lost family it's a big deal you know it's it's not hard to see why suicide is such a it's like a very inviting option i want to use that word with oh my god tongue on terrible. tongue yeah. cheek, right because no. yeah but i want people to hear that wow for you you might say oh my god why is she saying that for these people it is real mm -hmm. it is a real issue because i don't i can't imagine myself walking down the street every day and people looking at me funny every day and some people even like laughing and giggling it's just it's stressful it's terrible and then mm -hmm. and then on um so that's on wednesdays at 1 p.m on thursdays at 1 p.m same time i have the pride corner which which basically celebrates lgbt persons now the show on linkedin helps businesses and organizations learn how to create safe spaces for these queer people so i'm talking to professionals and people at work and co-workers. I'm talking about co-workers. Whereas on, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, I'm really just talking to you about your story, your family's reaction to your story when you came out or when you shared it with them. How are you coping as an individual? So one show is for the individual queer people, which is on, on Instagram. One show is for people at work, which is on LinkedIn naturally and then of course my show on youtube talks to parents about just things that they need to know i obviously i'm not a trans person i'll never know what that right. feels like but i was a queer child so i know what it's like to right. not be authentic you know in your in whatever your presentation as a as, an, as a young person so yeah I mean, thank you so much for work yeah i wanted to make sure i put that out there everyone youtube that's 10 a.m on thursdays parents of queer kids show Remember the Refuge app as well. This will all be in the description. So just scroll down on uh, 1 p.m. on Wednesdays is Queer Wednesday Wisdom. And that helps business and organizations create safe places. Then on Thursday at uh, 1 p.m., that's over on Instagram. And that's the Pride Corner where you share your story and your family's reaction. Um, we might as well share your handles now while we're talking about all these shows. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. So on Twitter, I go by at Dr. Lulu Talk Radio. So Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube have the same handle, Dr. Lulu Talk Radio, all three of them. Really, honestly, I was told by my niece, who's, you know, 23, she said, Auntie, once I Google Dr. Lulu, you once I Google that, you pop up. I said, uh, okay, this is a good thing. So great. I guess I can even dare to say if you type Dr. Lulu on your on your computer, it will pull me up somewhere along the line. And that's a good thing. That's a testament to just how much I've put myself out there, how much I've kind of been, yeah, been been representing the voices that, that are voiceless, which is actually, which brings me to my TED Talk, which yeah, um, was just titled, ask, yeah. Um, yeah, it's titled um, Voiceless Representation or something like that. Let me, let me see if I can find the name voiceless something but it was in it was a tedx suny upstate new york where they um they were unspoken voices so there is unspoken voices unspoken. so basically what we did was um was they 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 allowed us about 10 of us 10 speakers to just come and talk about things that people would not 
ordinarily be thinking about. Like there was a gentleman who was talking about pain in, in children. The fact that kids do feel pain, you know, they do feel pain. So the way you react to them can either, you know, teach them how to handle their pain in the future or not. Then somebody was talking about, you know, how how you cannot measure success based on hard work because some people work really hard, but just because they don't attain a particular set of success doesn't mean that they didn't work hard. It depends on what they define as success. So I learned a lot. Yeah. I and mean, a lady talked about some hacks for headaches for women because women get headaches a lot. But I talked about, you know, the danger of, gender assignment in a sense when the baby is born we say it's a boy or it's a girl it's vincent or dr lulu based really based on our external genitalia but what gender identity is is how your brain sees you not how the world sees you that's the best way i came up with that like yesterday i was like oh my goodness that is the definition of gender identity my brain sees me as a boy Mm -hmm. Even if my body says something different. So unfortunately or fortunately, these people, everyone sees them based on their body. So we dress them a certain way. We give them certain toys. We give them certain, you know, oh, boys should be strong and girls can be weak or, you know, something like that. The society is so binary. We mm -hmm. only see things binary ways. If I walk into the room with Vincent right now and I bump against a chair and nearly fall, Everyone is going to kind of come and rush to to save. I mean, obviously, I'm black. Who knows? Who knows? But they'll right. try to run to come and save the, the woman who is falling. But if Vincent, if you bumped your foot and tried to fall, you won't get the same reaction because they say, oh, well, he's a man. He can handle mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But can you really? Can you really? And that's why I love your show. Your show talks about normalizing mental, mental distress, you know, mental distress, which may not necessarily mean mental illness, like you take medication, but it's distressed nonetheless, because my kid leaving the house that day to go use the restroom, she had already thought ahead of time, mm -hmm. if I need to go again, or I'm not going to drink a lot of water or, you know, all of these things. So I don't have to start looking for gender neutral bathrooms. Yeah. That's just a stress. That's a stress mm -hmm. and extra stress that you and I don't have to deal with. And then on top of everything, she's black. So you can imagine yeah. the intersectionality of the black transgender child right where all these factors are against them and then you toss in transgender i mean it's everybody has a mental health we all have a physical health but we also have a mental health no matter what your gender is no matter what your race is no matter your sex if you're a male or a female we all have it and this show, I try to do the best job I can to help as many as I can. And that's why I want to thank you so much for taking the time, Dr. Delu, to reconnect with me, sharing your show, sharing all the great work you're doing. And of course, um, everything we spoke about will be in the show description. Dr. Lulu Talk Radio, that is her handle on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Be sure to give her a follow. And Dr. Lulu, until we talk again, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.